Namaste everybody. Good morning. So we proceed with the discussion on lecture 18 that we had started yesterday. So we discussed a few slides from lecture 18. I'll just flip over those slides and then we can go on to discuss the content further. So discussing about harmony in the society. And we started three to four days back discussing the goal of human being living in society and the dimensions of the society to fulfill the human goal. And then we started discussing the scope of the system yesterday. So we are all acquainted with this. We are the human goals and the five dimension society. Just in a brief response to what Sukriti Ji was just mentioning. So when we discuss about leadership, so first of all, we have to make out the goal for leadership. So this is the goal. If we look at leadership on the basis of universal human values, then this is the goal. So a person who is having the clarity, commitment and preparation to fulfill this goal will, will be able to fulfill the qualities of leadership. And then he or she will be in a position to participate in one or many of these orders of these uh, dimensions. And we started again uh, discussing the meaning and uh, of each of these words, education, sanskar. So we had discussed this far. Going about education, we discussed in detail what will be the process of development, the natural process of development for a child in a family, how the child gets educated naturally in a family. So this is the way it needs to be. This is the natural process. But if the right understanding and right feeling is not ensured in the parents, in the family, that kind of tradition is not there, then this might result. And then we have to make a choice. Where do we want to be? Something written on the left hand side or something written on the right hand side. So this is something that we'll discuss now. So this we had discussed uh, up to uh, this part. <clears throat> so what is the desire or expectation of a child? So uh, you'll see that the child expects justice. In Hindi, it is called as Nyaya Ka Yachak. So in every interaction, the child expects justice. And justice, we had decided, uh, we had discussed that justice means that we are able to recognize the naturally acceptable feelings in the relationship, fulfill them, evaluate them rightly, and it leads to mutual happiness. So in every interaction with the parents, with the siblings, with all in the family, the child does expect justice. Second thing is, there is desire for right work and behavior in the child. So the natural acceptance of the child is there already for having the right conduct. So the child naturally wants to participate, make effort to learn and can learn. And the child speaks the truth. Speaking the truth here doesn't mean the child knows the truth also, but the child is able to or is uh, willing to present the way he or she observes the things. So the child naturally speaks whatever truth it knows. It willingly makes efforts to understand, asks a lot of questions, and it can understand. So these three qualities are observed in the child. The child expects justice. The child has a desire for right work and behavior, and the child speaks the truth. Now, the way this education will help, so these expectations are there very much from the early childhood. Now through this kind of education, what it can transform is, so the child was initially expecting justice, now the child can have the ability to do justice. So the child initially was just expecting justice from outside, demanding justice from outside, from his family members. But through these inputs, the child gradually develops the competence, the ability to ensure justice in every relation, every moment. It is called a Nyaya Pradai Chamta. Then initially the child had the desire to have right behavior and work. But through these inputs, the child develops the competence for right work and right behavior. Similarly, the child was trying to speak the truth, even though he or she was not aware of the truth completely. 
but now with right understanding and right feeling the child is now having the knowledge of truth the child is satyabodh and this understanding this knowledge of truth extends from family uh, extends from self to the entire existence so the child expects parents elders teachers society everyone to facilitate it to attain the satisfaction point and this is the role of education sanskar so this education sanskar starts from the family itself in fact if you look at it closely uh the preparation in the family has to start before the child takes birth so the before becoming parents it is our responsibility to ensure this kind of competence something that is written on the right hand side within us so that we are able to fulfill this desire of the child which is written on the left hand side so that after some time this competence something that is written on the right hand side gets developed in the child also and there is a tradition of right understanding and right living in the family so on the left hand side what is mentioned is expectation on the right hand side is the competence and this is the whole process for development this is the uh, uh, development that takes place in our lifetime so we discussed about this so currently our state of the society or individual could be something like this but here we want to be naturally and for that the transformation is required for that education is required and through that education only the personal transformation will get enabled and that will enable societal transformation right then we have talked about health and self regulation this was discussed in detail by shamila didi yesterday then we also talked about work and production this we had discussed here again regarding the four kinds of production activities we had a uh, detailed discussion in fact dasho elaborated it upon also and an important point that came out yesterday is that if we are including primary production in our production activities at whatever level let's say family or village or even village order then this is something that can be more sustainable but when we are depending on this fourth kind of production activity which is which is uh, uh, pertaining to the services or the service sector then the sustainability is at question so we have to see uh, where we have to start from many a times unknowingly uh, in the society we give some sense of respect to something that is associated with the fourth level of production but very generally we differentiate or generally we do not uh, respect properly uh, people who are involved in the primary or secondary production so this is something that we have to investigate within ourselves are we able to rightly evaluate people who are involved in all the four kinds of production activities in justice we had discussed that was discussed in detail particularly day before yesterday we took some examples from bhutan also and we had a detailed sharing on this this is also something that we discussed yesterday what is required for justice in the society at each level at the level of family at the level of neighborhood in the institution so we also discussed how we can enable justice in our workplace let's say if you are working in an institution then how to ensure justice in our institution can we have some uh, sharing among us can we have some regular meetings among us so that we are able to share our feelings with others so that we are able to make a program working with each other for right understanding and right feeling in every human being can the institution turn into a family kind of thing where there is an acceptance of relationship where there is a feeling of complementariness for each other so in place of finding faults with others in place of having complaints and grudges for the others can we get into dialogue with the other so that we are able to complement wherever someone is falling short in terms of competence so like that clarity of the base as well as details are essential for a humane society to materialize and most importantly our meaningful participation in one or more societal systems or dimensions is expected then preservation we had discussed exchange we had started discussing but we'll take up in more detail today so exchange we said that uh, we exchange physical facilities now what is the viewpoint there what is the 
uh, feeling there when we are exchanging physical facility? Is it mutual fulfillment or is it for obsession of profit or exploitation? As Rajul, we were just mentioning that the corporate, maybe it is working mostly for maximization of profit. So is the maximization of profit our goal <coughs> or <coughs> mutual fulfillment our goal? These two are two different things. So whenever we are involved in these dimensions with right understanding and right feeling, then the whole paradigm may take a shift. Okay. So the way we are producing today, <clears throat> we are producing today for maximization of our wealth. We are exchanging for maximization of profit. But with right understanding, right feeling, there could be a different uh, mode of working also. And if you look at that, when you are working for mutual fulfillment, and if you try to evaluate at a comprehensive level, you'll see that overall, we are in a much better state. When we are working for maximization of profit, then it may be the case that wealth at our end grows, but wealth at the other end may, may diminish, right? And in the long run, it may lead to struggle, it may lead to feuds, it may lead to uh, clashes, wars, and then we have to invest ourselves to cater to these kinds of situations. And then we have to invest our wealth to cater to these kinds of situations. So if you observe in the long run, we are at a loss. If you just observe how many wars we have fought in the past 150 years, so how much of physical facility we have invested, how many people have got invested, got killed in those wars. So overall, we have been at a loss. This broad picture is seldom clear to us when we are working in the society today. This broad picture also has to be brought out. In fact, some research has to be conducted. Uh, some research which is uh, closely connected to this, but not exactly on this topic, I would like to mention here that in Harvard, when research was conducted and that research uh, had 75 years of uh, time uh, that had lapsed in 2016 itself. So it is still continuing. So the research is continuing for over 75 years. And the research was conducted among 724 people of US. Half of them were from the deprived section of the society and half of them were from the affluent society. And one of the members of the affluent society also became the president of America. And then they tried to find out who are happier, those who are deprived or those who are affluent. And it was found that it's not wealth that matters in happiness. What mattered more was the feeling of relationship. So those who were enjoying a better state of relationship in the family, in their, in their connections, they were happier. Their longevity was more. So it's not wealth that mattered in terms of uh, happiness. In fact, many of the people from that affluent society uh, committed suicide, some went mad, some were jailed. These also uh, things were there. Some from the deprived section also uh, met a similar end. But it was ultimately found out that this wealth had no direct relation with the happiness. What was directly related was the feeling of relationship. The second thing that was found was it's not only being related to the other, but rather the quality of relationship. Whether we are able to ensure the right feelings in the relationship. But of course, in that research, they have not been able to contemplate on the feelings that we're discussing right now. So with this understanding, maybe we can come up with some better uh, results also for discussion. So it was the quality of relationship that mattered and not just the connections. So one might have 5,000 people on the Facebook connected to them, but whether there is somebody with whom they are able to share their feelings closely, that is more important. Even in the family, it may be that the spouses are not able to go together very well, but still, if they have the feeling of affection for each other, uh, that makes the difference. And the third thing that was found was when the when the relationship is better and the quality is also good, then the memory also uh, remains uh, stable for a long time. The health of the body also uh, is good for a longer time. So these are three things that they concluded. Now a similar kind of research can be conducted in terms of production and exchange also. That when we are exchanging for maximization of profit, Ultimately, whether we are losing or gaining, ultimately, if you just see 
uh, we have the list of uh, trillionaires uh, uh, being uh, published every year across the world, even in our country, right? list of billionaires. But many of them, if you just see, the list keeps on changing every month, every week, right? Now, by going all at all this, whether <clears throat> the happiness is ensured or not, or if some firm is working only for maximization of profit without paying attention to justice in the relationship, without paying attention to the mutual fulfillment in interaction with the nature, what happens in the long run? What happens to the uh, business that they are into? We'll also see that people who have been uh, in business or in, uh, I'm using the word business to combine this production and management for a long time in our nation. Okay, now what has been uh, their policy? Have they paid attention to the relationship or not? Have they paid attention to the enrichment of the nature or not? So all this also can be studied by some of us. Similarly for storage, whether the storage of physical facility is there with a view of mutual fulfillment or is it with obsession for profit or accumulation? So many times we are exchanging for maximization of profit and storing for maximization of accumulation. But here again, we can see that in the long run, what happens? Overall, do we gain or lose when we have this kind of view? Certain things might be quite vivid to us that yes, if you are exchanging only for maximization of profit, you are ultimately going to lose. The family is going to suffer, the family is going to split, they are going, they are going to feuds in the family. In a similar manner for a story, if somebody is just accumulating without taking care of the relationship, without taking care of the health, without taking care of uh, the nature, then what happens in the long run? Over three generations, what was the outcome? One thing that has been observed is that in many of the areas in our country where the highways were made, the land was sold at a very elevated price, very high price. So the farmers who were into, uh, the, who were cultivating that land uh, got enormous price for that. But could they right utilize the wealth that they got? So this is just one case study. So that can also be done. What happened to the first generation? What happened to the second generation? What happened to the third generation? And ultimately what mattered in ensuring happiness and prosperity? There are other segments of the society also, people who are into business, people who are into service sector. So we can conduct this kind of research also in our management or uh, uh, other uh, programs to just make out what has been the outcome. So there could be three kinds of economics. One kind of economics is take and take economics. So it is called as lane lane ka siddhant. Okay, I want to take the maximum from you. You want to take the maximum from me. And then what happens is there is domination, there is exploitation of the human being, and there is exploitation of the rest of nature also. So there is a feeling of opposition here. There is a feeling of doubt on the other, whether the other will take more or I will take more. And the result is both try to maximize their share in terms of profit, right? Needs are undefined and also assumed to be unlimited while there is a uh, viewpoint that resources are limited and everyone is bound to be deprived in that case. So this kind of economics uh, could be one when we are trying to take the maximum from the other and the other is also trying to take the maximum from us. So there's a tug of war kind of thing, right? We are pulling, we are trying to pull the exchange out our side so that we can get the maximum share of it. And the other is also trying to pull on one's own side so that he or she could get the maximum share. Isn't it? The second could be give and take economics. <clears throat> so I think of, or you think of giving the maximum to me, and I think of taking the maximum from you. Right? Then what will happen here? So either we'll be indifferent or we'll get into opposition sometime. So this, if you see, if some person is trying to give the maximum and the other is trying to take the maximum, then this will not be sustainable. After some point of time, one part will get deprived and then the first kind of economics will start. Okay. So many times we do start in relationship with this kind of economics and feel cheated. And then we have a common notion that no one can be trusted. And then we lose that sense of respect also for each other. And then we again enter into this take take economics. But there could be another possibility and that is the give and give economics. Give and give economics means that I am trying to give to the other with a feeling of relationship and the other is also trying to give to me 
with the feeling of relationship and we are also including the nature here that we are trying to enrich the nature also because the nature is giving so much to us so both are working for mutual enrichment of each other there is a feeling of relationship now when you try to give to the other okay so to have it sustained we have to identify the needs i am trying to make out my needs i am trying to make out the others needs also with a feeling of relationship so we can get into dialogue also to identify the needs of each other and we can try these things in our mutual relations in our family within let's say we have a family of uh, six people eight people and then we can try this here right we can start from the family but one thing to note here is that uh, many a times it is also observed that in our own close family we try to have this give and give economics but with the family outside it means the rest of the society we may try to go for take and take economics so that is also not desirable that with one uh, set of people we are having the third kind of economics and with another set of people we are having the first kind of economics that will also not work out okay so we have to start from the family but we have to extend this to the whole world family and for that right understanding and right feeling will be required otherwise it will not be sustained so we have to identify the needs and we are able to see that yes needs are definite the needs for physical facility for nurturing the body protecting the body and rightly utilizing the body are definite then we can produce more than what is required by cyclic and mutually enriching process because we have to give to the nature also right and when we are trying to make out the needs precisely you know, we will see that the need for physical facility for any human being is quite limited in fact all of us who are into this session might have been able to observe this that when you try to articulate the need of the physical facility correctly without relating the physical facility to the happiness of the self then you can see that the needs of physical facilities are quite limited you just purchase a woolen garment in one season and that continues for 5 to 6 years in fact this is not something universal but one thing i would like to share just through some articulation that we can make out how much price i am paying for one garment in a day so it may be that if i am purchasing a garment for 500 rupees then i am able to use it for 500 days so that cost that i am bearing for the garment is 1 rupee per day can we make out some kind of articulation like this what is the price of clothes that i am paying every day is it 1 rupee per day 2 rupees per day or 100 rupees per day isn't it so in fact the, in the current system of exchange so we can identify and see that how much price i have to pay for fulfilling the physical needs today even if i am not producing just by exchanging uh, through currency we can make some articulations like in fact these issues can also be taken up as some model uh, for exchange some model for research or some model for right utilization right uh, what is the price that we are paying right for clothes for houses if i am building a house for these many lakhs okay so what is the, and what is the life of this house and how much price i have to pay every day so these kinds of articulations can also be made so we can see that resources are more than required every family can be prosperous every human being can be prosperous so these three economics uh, these three models of economics are uh, possible now we have to make out what is naturally acceptable to us the third one the second one or the first one right so naturally acceptable is the third one now can we start looking at this kind of uh, exchange system in our personal life in our day to day life so this is something that we have discussed now when we go by fulfilling the uh, human goal by working in these five dimensions then we have orderliness in the society so the first step of this orderliness is family order let's say we have 10 people in a family and there are three generations in a family okay so there could be 10 people and it is desirable that there are three generations living in a family uh, this is also something that we can explore investigate or conduct research for and we can see that the youngest generation complements better the oldest generation and the oldest generation complements better the youngest generation so presently since the three generations are not staying in the family together so there are multiple problems particularly for people 
who have migrated to the cities okay they are facing so many issues for taking care of the child properly taking care of the health properly so on one hand the older generation might be suffering in some suburb uh, suburban area not uh, having anyone to take care of them and the younger generation is also suffering not having anybody to take care of them so on one hand the older generation is going to the old age home and the younger generation is going to the crash or uh, such uh, systems but if you could have i am not saying that this is possible from the very first day but at least this could be in our vision okay why should the older generation go to the old age home and the younger generation go to the crash right and we are just involved in working for physical facility right nobody is able to take care of anybody else so we have to look into that so if we are able to ensure a family of 10 people you know uh, let's say this way then the family cluster could be of 10 square people then the village order could be of 10 cube people and going so uh, in such a manner we can have a world family of 10 to the power of 10 people right so this could be the order of universal human order or universal order right so to sum up we had discussed partly about this i think this whole slide was there the same slide is here so these are the four goals and the family the basic unit of society and we can move in this manner then we can be in a position to ensure uh, orderliness from family order to the world family order generation after generation and this becomes the tradition in the society the human tradition in the society so this much we had discussed already we detailed upon the dimensions presently and then we took up some more issues now we are going to talk about the education policies at various levels what could be the education policy at the level of family what could be the education policy <clears throat> at the level of society at the level of system so education at the societal level so the formal education where we have schools colleges universities so there is a formal process of teaching learning and understanding things now in the informal education we have this media television okay uh, there are certain things designed to educate people which are dramas books okay movies uh, there could be also songs folk songs all these things are there which also educate the society then we have festivals and functions so all these give a message the way the festivals are organized the way the functions are organized the way we develop the content for the media the television we make dramas we write books we like we write <coughs> stories songs so there is a publicity performance and publication okay but that cannot be the main process of education so it is a informal channel but that also many a times uh, determines the state of imagination of the self of the society of the self of people living in the society so let's say when a new movie comes okay then we we'll see that there is a change in the trend in the society many a times the uh, clothes that people wear the uh, facilities that people use okay the way they talk the way they live many times it is influenced by such systems so this is also another channel where we have to work for so that we are able to uh, indirectly also give the right message to the society okay and we can cite many examples right i do observe that uh, after this movie called dhoom uh, came the old fashion the bikes that were being used earlier okay or the luna or moped that were being used in india earlier suddenly they lost their market and the young students jump to the this high powered bikes which run very fast now that has got an influence on the imagination of the uh, young people a single movie you can also see that when this movie called three idiots came then after that there has been a change a kind of i'll say policy change also to a large extent in the way teaching and learning is taking place so the informal channels also have a very influence a good kind of influence on the society and then we can look into these channels also how to make them better how to make them 
map with the human goal can we make movies which depict human goal can we make movies which depict justice which depict uh, mutual fulfillment in fact uh, when we are working with the students nowadays with uh, through ICT so uh, in the fourth year the bachelor in the, of the bachelor level program the students go for projects so can we take up such projects particularly uh, in areas where students like the media uh, is there so can the students of media take up such projects can the students of design architecture also uh, take up some projects which uh, can depict such messages uh, for the society then education at the level of system so there has to be education for all education is the basic requirement of every individual therefore every human being needs to have proper opportunity to get education so there could be policy for human education education of value based living and it needs to be decided as to what favorable conditions have to be provided for every child so as to give the opportunity for education to everyone a good thing in this century is that education has almost become available to everyone that was not to be seen for ages many a times it was restricted to a particular section of society and also the physical facilities were not so much available that it could be made available to everybody okay now we can see that particularly in this lockdown period also we could see that through these it tools uh, we can very easily communicate to the people and education has also been taking place using these it tools so it has almost become available to everybody now okay now uh, after these nptel lectures and all these have become more effective uh, like we have mooc courses also so and these digital platforms also being developed to uh, uh, transfer the content to the other then slowly the classroom teaching and learning will transform now the students will already have the content delivered to them through these it channels and they they can come to the classroom and just discuss the content and if we are able to enable this channel effectively then a person sitting in a remote area can also get educated so the education education in the current sense of the word at least like the skill development part has become available to every child almost and if you are able to enable this kind of content the value based content through the channels then the same content can percolate to every section every child of the society so it has to be properly expanded in the policy for example what and how much to be provided at which level so the primary school may be there at the village level secondary school may be among two to four villages so this is one thing and in in addition to this when we try to utilize these uh, uh, channels for uh, it to make the education available to all then we can add to the content add to the availability of the education to every child then research facilities may be established among 10 to 20 villages but this is all the proposal i say okay and we can work out various models of educating every person in the society this is just uh, one possibility that we have tried to make out but we can have many more ideas coming up here then what would be the priority in education policy so the content and method of education needs to be humane this is the first thing what we are imparting in terms of education are we imparting something in terms of education for maximization of profit maximization of hoarding or we are imparting something which can develop the competence to live with mutual fulfillment mutual happiness mutual prosperity so this content has to be developed and this content has to be humane similarly the method of education will it be will it be by sermonizing or dominating or prescribing okay or through competition or with a feeling of relationship with a feeling of uh, holistic development so the method also has to be humane then every person needs to have the opportunity and favorable conditions to get the required education so this also has to be ensured and when we are making an education policy we have to take care of this and all supporting facility for education is to be available so first of all the education the very notion of education has to be clear and then we have to make it available to every person okay by providing the opportunity as well as the facility so i think this is not something that we have discussed in every workshop uh, when we had the workshop for the mark the shucks then we brought this content 
So maybe many of us who are in this session are, are being exposed to this content for the first time. Then there is a potential process for transforming education and what could that process be? We are going to discuss it. So one possibility is that we are discussing about uh, one possible of way of going about the transformation in education, which has been tried over the last four decades and which seems to be working. So something that we have been discussing so far is one possible way. So the step one would be mass awareness. So mass awareness means we are able to interact with every uh, section of the society, every individual in some way or the other, so that we are able to communicate this particular content to every human being. So we can have conferences, workshops, discussions with a view to facilitate the self-exploration about a holistic perspective with our family members, with people who have interest and readiness for purposeful social effort and societal development. Then we can interact with teachers, educators, education administrators. We can interact with policymakers and people connected to governance with colleagues at work. And this can be extended. The list can be further extended. We can ex interact with lawyers. We can extend with jail inmates. We can ex uh, interact with police personnel, with social workers. So this kind of interaction is very much possible. But when we are interacting with people who are directly into education or making policies for education or governance, then this program will become more effective. But every person has a role to play. Even a person inside the jail has a role to play. If you are able to transform that particular person who is in jail for some heinous crime, okay, that sends a, such a good message to the society and the assurance in the society, the fearlessness in the society also grows. That yes, nobody is intentionally doing anything wrong. It's only that uh, it's a lack of competence because the sanskar has not been good. Okay, so a kind of fearlessness will grow. Currently, people are so much in fear, so much of mistrust. Nobody is trustworthy. Okay, you can't depend on anybody. Okay, everybody has to be feared. You have to earn more to keep yourself secure. So these kind of notions can also be transformed when we are able to make this program effective. If you can transform a person who has done something wrong, if you are able to transform those people who are considered to be very difficult, who can never change, you know, these kinds of uh, notions are also there. When we are working with institutions, then uh, you'll see that in every institution, there is notion about some people that they can never change. And many times people say also that if you are able to change that person, then only I will accept that your, your content is effective. <laughs> these kinds of things are also discussed sometimes. Yeah, Didi, any question? So this mass awareness is also very important. So awareness, uh, the step one would be awareness or orientation programs in institutions. So short workshops for decision makers, members of the board, vice chancellors, deans, faculty members, they, are, they can all sit through and attend the workshop. Initial faculty development for selected faculty, maybe one day, three days, eight days, this kinds of workshops can be conducted. And now when we have this online mode, then we can start with the 5D online also. This can be added to this. Incorporating UHV orientation in the student induction program. This is something that has got started and doing so well. Uh, we made a plan that for every 20 students, one faculty has to get oriented. Then short workshops or awareness, awareness programs for faculty and staff, all faculty and staff. So maybe some faculty are seriously interested and they are able to go forward. So we can see that there are so many of us in this session, but there could be some faculty who are not so much of, uh, interested, but at least we can have some awareness programs for them. We can have programs for staff. We can add parents also here. Why only students, faculty and staff? Why not even parents? Because many times uh, the students are you say the parents have a huge role to play in determining the life of the students. So we can have programs for their parents also. Then we can have weekly meetings in the organization. This is very important, something that we discussed yesterday also. We can have weekly meetings in the institutions. We can identify the faculty, staff, their spouses, and others who are potential facilitators. In fact, this also has been tried out <clears throat> that even the spouses of faculty can conduct sessions with the students. Uh, this way, no, uh, at the load of the faculty is also shared by the family. 
and when the students are able to interact with the family members then they get assured that yes this person who is talking to us and giving some input in the classroom is also living accordingly in the family because the spouses are coming forward with an assurance so this gives a better sense of relationship of the child with not only the family but also they are able to relate better to the content that yes this is very much valid it is not something bookish it is not something which is just being prescribed to us it is very much something which can become a part and parcel of our living it is something livable that assurance is also there so if you are able to involve our family also while imparting this kind of input to the students then the students are able to relate better so the family of the teachers as well as the families of the students can also join in such programs those modes can be worked out particularly in those colleges which are turning to nodal centers or they are aspiring to become nodal centers they can think in this direction also so uh, sending them for the fdp and developing more and more resource persons so we are able to see that through the process that we are going through more and more resource persons are also being developed presently we are having weekly meetings uh, for all the zones and there we have started uh, having sessions where the participants who attended uh, workshop few months back now they are coming and presenting the content and then we are able to share our feedback and then they are able to work more on their presentation more on their uh, understanding as well as skill of taking the content forward to the others so this is very much possible so what happens through uh, this kind of thing there is a personal transformation so there is a self verification so uh, by listening to the content and remembering to you know so they start by listening and just remembering the content but they are gradually able to have the state of understanding so three things are here self verification self awareness and self evaluation so self verification is the same as self exploration that we have been uh, saying so we listen to the content then you are able to remember the content the we are able to analyze it you are able to articulate it why this word has been particularly used here why not there right uh, what is the meaning of this word in comparison to the other word so this kind of analysis goes on in the imagination also and then gradually we are able to understand the things then this also enables you to become aware aware of uh, whatever is going on inside you so uh, those of us who joined the morning session that was started a uh, few months back we had two practice sessions of becoming aware becoming aware of our imagination as well as becoming aware of the interaction with the body so gradually going through this process we are more aware of our thought our behavior our work and our level of understanding we are able to articulate also well then we are able to evaluate self evaluation so sorting out what is worth and what is not so i might have stored so many things within me but whether something is based on right understanding or preconditioning or sensation we are able to evaluate we are also able to evaluate whether our behavior is leading to mutual happiness or not many times in our behavior are seldom able to see whether the other got fulfilled through my behavior or not we are many a times just engrossed in uh, easing out ourselves if i am anguished if i am uh, in pain then i just have to behave in such a way so that my pain goes down whatever happens to the other is not our concern many times we think like this but this is not desirable what is desirable is that we are able to ensure mutual happiness similarly we are able to ensure mutual prosperity in our interaction with the rest of nature so this kind of personal transformation take place then uh, the step 2 would be incorporating universal human values in the academic curricula so there is a foundation course on universal human values and ethics so this course is already there and now that aict has made a mandate that every college has to have this course a formal course in the second year a credit three credit course so this will become more effective now only that the faculty who are teaching this course have to have understanding in completeness of the content of this course so that at least they are able to deliver the content well then we can have weekly meetings of the faculty students we can have mentorship programs of students by the faculty and senior students so many of us are also mentors in our colleges we can have social projects and socially relevant final year projects social internship is also possible so we discuss about so many projects while we are discussing the dimension of society so we can start thinking in that direction of giving such projects to our students
then we can have higher level courses on universal human values or which can be elective courses also so presently also in aktu we have uhc 1 2 3 and 4 already right and then we have some added courses on various ways the various perspectives about universal human values so understanding the human being understanding coexistence human relationship values and ethical human conduct understanding universal human order so these high level courses can be planned presently in aict also two courses are mandatory uhc 1 that is during the induction program and which we do that is in the second year okay but we can have courses in the third and fourth year also as we are having in uh, up technical university called as abdul kalam technical university then we can have value based streams of education so the technologies and systems of holistic development can be there so we can offer programs in btech and mtech okay we can also include more courses based on holistic technology holistic systems in our uh, this professional courses in btech and mtech so there is one course of environmental science which is compulsory uh, as uh, mandated by the government okay but we can have more courses here managing by relationship so we can offer a program equivalent to mba of managing by relationship we can offer similarly uh, programs uh, which are equivalent to btech and mtech right on these particular issues like technologies and systems of holistic development then we can have a course equivalent to mbbs on a holistic human health we can design some more courses right in law we can have courses uh, equivalent to bblb or uh, masters program which is based on justice right so these all possibilities are there we can develop such courses we can develop such modules then incorporating human values in the academic curriculum going ahead so requisite support and policy initiatives by the by monitoring agencies such as mhrd ugc aict icmr uh, university board of governors and academic councils and school education boards these all will are going to be helpful so we do require support and initiatives from people who are uh, running these boards these uh, institutions and then strengthening faculty development programs on a large scale with adequate development of resource material Uh, this can be actualized by establishing human values resource centers at the regional and national levels, even at the international levels. And particularly, uh, we are able to see that through this online mode, we can conduct very effectively such workshops with faculty development programs for people across the globe. Isn't it? Now, just see that we all are sitting in our houses, right? And we are able to interact so well. So we can interact in a similar manner to people across the globe. This possibility is very much there. In fact, uh, we can go ahead in this particular year also, provided we have uh, those many resource persons, because every faculty development program comes with a responsibility also of follow-up, proper follow-up. So if those of us who are in the session today, right now, if they are able to uh, uh, develop themselves so that they are able to conduct such workshop. So the uh, this, uh, Propagation, this multiplication is going to be very fast. Then provide adequate thrust to R&D dedicated towards transforming the whole mainstream education into humanistic education, that is value-based education. So we can conduct research in these areas. Presently, our research is mostly focused on physiochemical things. Can we also conduct research on something that is related to the self, the conscious part? Okay. We can just see that about 100 or 150 years back, this notion was floated in the society that they struggle for survival and only the fittest can survive by Darwin. Okay. And in the past 100 years, if you see, this has become the most common preconditioning among the people that they struggle for survival, only the fittest can survive. Can we have an alternative notion to this that no, existence is coexistence? Okay, every human being innately wants to make every other human being happy. There's abundance in nature and the need for physical facilities limited. So, if you conduct research effectively, then we can have these kinds of notions also prevalent in the society, which will counter the false notions. 
in economics many times we are taking the wants are unlimited and the students have a conclusion that the need for physical facilities is unlimited right now when they are talking about wants being unlimited then they are talking about the desires being unlimited for those who are not having right understanding if you try to articulate it well but those particular uh, specifications are not mentioned there and a common notion that is spreads is that wants are unlimited it means the needs are unlimited and this has also become a very false notion right kind of mindset that gets prepared through education is that wants are unlimited so nobody is going to be prosperous everybody is bound to be deprived so can we conduct research something in uh, these areas also so that we can dispel such false notions we are able to see very clearly that no need for physical facilities is limited okay and the need of the self is something going to be fulfilled only through right understanding right feeling not through physical facilities now in the past 10 years we can see that people who have come across these kinds of workshops or these inputs are able to somewhat think in that direction also this channel of thought has also become at least available to them but it can become more prevalent and what we are doing right now if you see it is a kind of societal transformation it is a civilizational transformation so that will do take time it is not going to happen in 10 or 20 years it may take 100 years also but that civilizational transformation is quite needed and quite possible also but for that we have to work in all these areas you have to not only conduct the fdp you also have to conduct r and d's then recognize value based systems of education for teaching and professional development requirements so uh, this is quite possible in fact uh, in uh, this uh, we have a uh, teacher training programs for various degree courses okay so if that this kind of input gets included in the teacher training programs then this will also not only be limited to uh, technical education it will also go to higher education also go to primary and education uh, primary and secondary education at a, at a much faster pace so we have to look into those possibilities also then there could be other modes of transforming education also so how do we intervene in the current system so every institute today has to define its vision and mission can the vision and mission be as per the human goal let's start thinking about this so when uh, the national education policy is also saying that we want to have a just and equitable society can the vision and mission of the institutions be in line with this particular vision that we need to have a just and equitable society in fact the institutions are able to see very clearly today that their role cannot be limited to teaching technologies and that's why humanities were introduced at a wide scale about 50 years back in all the institutions that we have to have humanities because we are ultimately human beings right now that the courses in humanities also can have these added inputs so that we are not just prescribing some theory by somebody but rather we are encouraging the students faculty and <clears throat> all those involved for self exploration so why just assume some theory right because some theories might also be misleading as we saw right now that if there is a theory called struggle for survival then it can be misleading right if there is a theory that wants are unlimited it can be misleading so with that vision only uh, humanities were introduced right and now can we also transform the courses in humanities to meet this end so can we set our vision and mission in accordance with the human goal and then we have these accreditation agencies like nb and nac and they also prescribe for outcome based education and if you look at the outcomes there are 12 outcomes that are listed there we'll have a look at it and five of them directly relate to the right understanding and right feeling in fact somehow since the natural acceptance is the same in every human being somehow we are able to reflect on these issues also but maybe it is quite indirect it can be directly addressed also so if you look at the 12 program outcomes okay in engineering education then you can see that the first outcome five outcomes relate to the skill part the engineering knowledge problem analysis design or development of solutions conducting investigations of complex problems modern solutions but if you look at the next four engineer and society so here we are talking about the human goal we can talk about very clearly about the human goal what role engineer has to play in the society environmental sustainability 
now you can see that this has become a major concern people are having some kind of feeling that this earth is not going to be livable 50 years hence <clears throat> and their voices being raised across the globe that in fact uh, there is one lady no uh, there is one girl child i am not remembering her name who raised her voice quite vocally in uno that uh, who are uh, we seniors to destroy the planet for the young generation okay so environmental sustainability is one concern then ethics is also included are we having effective courses on ethics in the curricula today then individual and team work now when it comes for individual and team work then for team work we have to have the competence to do work together with a mutually fulfilling relationship so can we have mutually fulfilling relationship while engaging in a team work in fact even today if you see you no know, it has become a great challenge for people uh, to work together it is also sometimes said that not two people can work together in continuity okay sustainably two people start working together and very soon they split so those kinds of challenges are there so can our education cater to them so if you look at the program outcomes they have been able to look at these facets also then there is communication in fact in communication also if you look at it closely it is not only the communication skill it is the feeling part also the behavior part also in fact when somebody comes to present a seminar also and uses very good english okay but exhibits some kind of ego or some kinds of uh, some kind of you know, ill feeling in the presentation the presentation is not effective unless we have the feeling of respect we have the feeling of uh, trust for the other the communication communication is not effective so this 10th outcome also if you see no communication here the right feelings have to be addressed then project management in finance okay so if you look at project management uh, including relationship then here also the understanding has to play a huge role and then there is lifelong learning this is also being talked about why should the education be limited only to 3 to 4 years if the student is there in a bachelor's program for 4 years should the learning stop after 4 years and when you go for lifelong learning then uh, in the this uh, life of the student after graduation there is a family so can the student also have some kind of uh, practice of living uh, in a family together so uh, this lifelong learning is being also addressed today and the nac and nb are focusing on this also so you can see that at least five of these directly relate and i will say the communication is also related to the right understanding to some extent because it is not only skill that matters then if you look at the nac uh, criteria then this 7.1.8 has directly mentioned human values and professional ethics here and giving 10 points so we have ample scope of intervening in the current system even the colleges which are little reluctant to take the content ahead we can go and talk to them that how we are going to meet the nbn nac criteria if you are not including these inputs in the education so you have got this from the uh, handbooks or the guidelines of nac and nba then we have bloom's taxonomy now today bloom's taxonomy is being discussed uh, uh, across all the institutions and even the question papers that are being made are being said that they have to obey uh, the bloom's taxonomy it is being said that they have to obey the bloom's taxonomy okay and uh, this is considered as the global language for education also bloom's taxonomy is used by teachers in writing the course outcomes so we have to write the course outcomes program outcomes we have to make the question papers uh, based on this taxonomy so this taxonomy talks about three domains one domain is the affective domain it includes the manner in which we deal with things emotionally for example feelings appreciations feelings appreciations okay so this relates to our natural acceptance the emotion part emotion can be more precisely placed when you are talking about feeling part because emotion can be either over or under evaluation also but when you talk about feeling it is very much precise and definite then there is a cognitive domain it involves knowledge and the domain uh, development of intellectual skills for example the cognition of specific facts so that is related to imagination that is desire thought and expectation and there is a psychomotor domain it involves physical movement coordination and use of motor skills for example perception response 
so that relates to behavior and work so you just see in the current system also people have somewhat tried to relate with with every dimension of the human being so this is the dimension of understanding realization the first one the second is the dimension of thought and the third is the dimension of behavior and work so almost every dimension being addressed so already there is placement of this kind of input in the system even today you just have to place them properly and when these inputs are there then we can place them in a much more effective manner there will be visible outcomes when this is in, uh, made effective or otherwise we can just keep on putting content uh, which satisfies the criteria but is not able to transform the human being so holistic education this is again something that we got from their booklet as per bloom's taxonomy if you see so they talk about four things heart body mind and soul so soul is something that relates to the natural acceptance mind is something that relates to the <coughs> desire thought and expectation in the self that is the imagination part body a physiochemical unit is the instrument of the self and heart is something to do with the relationship you just see there is so much of uh, placement already in the system today that we do not have to carve everything out uh, something new you know so already the carving is there okay we just have to <laughs> make it more effective in the system today so the affective domain we will talk about this uh, which is called as the attitude also if you look at this okay so here they have mentioned in the state of mind incorporating value into life rearrangement of the value system acceptance okay so these issues are there already the placement is there you only have to rightly place the meaning of value okay value system what is the meaning of acceptance isn't it what is the objective with map with the human goal so we need to intervene here in the affective domain at the policy level so in psychology you know, there is enough of a scope to intervene at these levels in fact how come these theories come out somebody conducted research somebody conducted a thorough study proposed something right so can we make another proposal by working on theories so another task that is there for us is to work in the next 20 or 50 years is to propose content theory which is directly based on this right understanding right feeling which can give a better format or some alternative to the existing theories also so there are some theories which are existing today but they need to be little made sharper and brighter and there are some theories which need to be uh, replaced with some alternative theory so we have enough of work to do in terms of uh, humanities in terms of management in terms of technology in terms of uh, law right there is enough scope and we can carve our own role sitting in the system wherever we are what we can do to make this education value based and each one of us can decide our role so we can reflect on this so what is the common goal of your family is it achieving it discussed periodically how does it map to the human goal in your family do we sit together and discuss the family goal the program for its fulfillment the role and participation of each of the family member members for the fulfillment the state of the fulfillment of the goal these are all things we can discuss what is the common goal of the organization that you belong to how does it map to the human goal this is something that we have to take up very seriously can you sit with the management and discuss these things that is our institution going to uh, work for the human goal or not how can you and your organization contribute for ensuring right understanding right feeling in the neighborhood of the institution rajul bhai was just mentioning few days back that we can a technical university has made a policy that every college has to adopt a school in fact when if charan ji is there then he can also talk about this so every college has to adopt a school similarly if you see uh, there is unnat bharat abhiyan in which every college has to adopt some villages okay then there is an uh, program called a program called odop in up one district one product and it is planned by the up government that every technical institution has to work hand in hand with the artisans working for that product that has been selected for the district so the colleges have research facilities lab facilities 
and the artisans do not have but they have the workforce they have the machines okay so can the research in the institutions be mapped with the production and training facilities available in the world outside so that can also be a good mapping here the students will get good projects to work on and the artisans will get uh, technical know-how scope for improvement